Oh boy, stay calm everyone, we're wrapping up the year with some awesome Kingdom Hearts news. What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy HMK once again and we got some new information on Kingdom Hearts Missing Link and an awesome new key art. But before we get into the analysis of this amazing art, let's go over the information that got released when it concerns Missing Link and the prototype applications. Now, Square Enix and Namor has confirmed that this will indeed be an initial prototype, something that will happen before the official closed beta. It's going to be extremely limited. Only a thousand applicants will be accepted when testing out this prototype, which once again will be Japan only. Other things to note is that the applications start today and will end on the 26th of December, and that the prototype will launch on the 13th of January and end on the 18th of January. Going on from that, this prototype will only be available to iOS users. But before you get it twisted, this is only for the prototype. As going off the trailer and common sense dictates that the full game will indeed be available for both iOS and Android. But right now, they're really getting this testing phase going. And apparently, if you get accepted into this program, you cannot post videos or screenshots from the prototype online. Although, you can talk about it and you can write about it as much as you want. All right, and now we get into this artwork. I really wanted to tear into this last night, but I got home super late. So now it's here. The key art to Kingdom Hearts Missing Link. And I already know what you're thinking. A lot of you guys have been saying on social media already. Oh man, Bloodborne vibes. And honestly, I get it. The whole atmosphere for this key art really screams gothic style Victoria era London with all the fog and even some steampunk vibes. I'm just out here looking at this art scene like a spot Jack the Ripper. But let's talk about this art a little bit, all right? Here we see Scala at Kylum, but the version of Scala at Kylum from Missing Link that predates the version that we see in Dark Road and in Kingdom Hearts 3. But while the trailer of Kingdom Hearts Missing Link was pretty happy, upbeat with the music, and even though it was a night, it was all sparkly and nice, and it gave us the feeling of hope. But when we look at this art, I get the complete opposite. It looks very dark, very grim, straight up depresso espresso. Here you can see various structures that make up the city of Skalad Kylum, with what seems to be the main castle in the distance. It is still currently unknown how Skalad Kylum goes from this to the iteration that we see in Dark Road and Kingdom Hearts 3. But the small theory I had is that it'll go through the same process that the Land of Departure goes through when it becomes Castle Oblivion, but with less, you know, oblivion. <laughs> But now, as we look towards the main street at the bottom of the art, we see 10 Keyblade wielders. And if you notice, they're divided into groups of three, and there are three trios aside from the character in the middle, who I believe represents the player. And one thing that is really cool to notice is that all of their faces are obstructed by either hair, hood, or hat. But we do recognize at least one of them, and that is Sigurd. You see, he's right there, posted up by the street lamp. This is the character that found Brain after he arrived in Scala at Kylum and was confirmed to be narrating the Kingdom Hearts Missing Link and the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailers. When it comes to the designs of these Keyblades, they seem to be very steampunk-like, very rudimentary. They pretty much give me the idea that they are put together in order to get the job done. But can I say I am loving the designs of these Keyblade wielders that we see in this art. And if the game is going to go along with this style, of course with customization, that focuses and pertains to this type of style, I am all for it. But another cool thing that I noticed is that among these characters, these 10 characters, there are some that have the Keyblade out and about and some that don't. You would think that's just, you know, a design choice for this poster. But remember, when it comes to the story of Kingdom Hearts Missing Link, we are dealing with two branches from a derived Keyblade bloodline. Those that are destined and those that are not. Blue Bloods and those that are not. What this art tells me when it comes to those that are wielding their Keyblades out in the open is that these wielders are those that are destined to become Keyblade wielders and are part of the main branch, the Blue Blood lineage of the Keyblade bloodline and that wielding their Keyblades out in the open asserts their position, their social class, so to speak. And that Keyblade wielders, such as the ones that are not wielding their Keyblades out in the open that are not part of the main branch of the Keyblade bloodline cannot do so. That they may be regulated to a second class citizenship within Scala Ad Kylum, possibly singled out to be aides to the main bloodline and custodians of the city itself. 
which definitely gave me that vibe when it comes to Sigurd when we saw the ending of Union Cross. And here in this art, he's now wielding his Keyblade out in the open. And I feel that a concept like this is going to be explored in Missing Link due to the idea of this branch bloodline being a focal point in the game. Either way, I am super excited and I know this game is going to be grand. But I want to know what you guys think. Let me know what you think about this art and the Missing Link updates in the comment section below. I honestly can't wait to hear more about this game and hopefully we don't have to wait too long for the worldwide closed beta. Be sure to like, share, and most importantly subscribe to HMK for more Kid Marts videos every week. Until the next video, this has been HMK and I'll check you guys later. So you haven't subscribed to HMK yet. Don't piss Xemnas off.